One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Good sound with a boost. This is Hunter McKee. Yeah, go. All right, so I'm just going to kind of do a step by step process of how we're going to do this. Each agency is going to have an opportunity to talk. Nice. You guys will have an opportunity to ask questions. So again, my name is Hunter McKee, H-U-N-T-E-R. I'm the Public Information Manager with the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. We have the Director of the OSBI, Angela Spurlock here, the Deputy Director of the OSBI, Stephen Carter. We also have representatives with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Um, we have the uh, Texas County Sheriff, and we also have the District Attorney. So we are going to start um, with a few words from the director of the OSBI, Angela Spurlock. Good morning. I appreciate you all coming today. Um, as Hunter said, my name is Angela Spurlock, the director for the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. Um, as you all know, we have been working very diligently for the last two weeks to bring closure to the families. Um, this has been challenging for everybody involved. Um, this, this case did not end the way we had hoped. Um, it has certainly been a tragedy for everybody involved. The mission of the OSBI, though, is to um, protect Oklahoma one partnership at a time and certainly this case and is an example of how those partnerships work um, and how it takes everybody coming together to bring resolution and so um, while I am very grateful for all of um, my agents that have worked since the very beginning um, 24 hours a day um, to get us to the point we are today um, we could not have um, reached where we're at without the partnerships of the Texas County Sheriff's Office, the District 1 District Attorney's Office, without our FBI partners, and without the um, assistance of the Oklahoma Medical Examiner's Office and the Oklahoma Highway Patrol that um, could not be here. So um, our condolences go out to the family and we will continue to update you as we continue to move this investigation forward. And I'm going to now turn it over to um, our FBI partners. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Sonia Garcia. I am acting special agent in charge for the Oklahoma City Field Office FBI. On behalf of the entire FBI, I want to express our sincerest condolences to the family and loved ones of Veronica and Jillian. The FBI was requested to assist on this matter on April 4th, and since then, we've had a dedicated team of analysts, agents, evidence response and tactical personnel working around the clock and alongside with OSBI and Texas, Texas County Sheriff's Office to bring the individuals responsible for this crime into custody and to provide a sense of closure to the families and to this community. Know that we are grieving with you today. We will continue to work with our partners and to be an advocate for Jillian and Veronica and to ensure that justice will be served. Thank you. My name is Matt Bowley. I am the Sheriff of Texas County and uh, I would also like to uh, offer our condolences to the family. And, uh, our, my agency's role in this is that we received a call on uh, March 30th of a, an abandoned vehicle missing with persons missing from the vehicle. Uh, deputies immediately responded to the area. Um, when they, when they uh, arrived on scene, uh, they found some things that just weren't adding up, so we established a crime scene and then notified the OSBI to have them come and, and assist us with this and uh, to actually take lead on the case. Right. Uh, we established a search party made up of the Guyman Fire Department and several of the volunteer uh, fire departments in the county and we searched a, uh, the area around the crime scene for about a mile in each direction. 
Uh, once the OSBI arrived on the scene, uh, they took the lead and uh, got us to this point where we are today. I'd like to thank the uh, Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, especially the Northwest region. Uh, they were phenomenal in this. The uh, Federal Bureau of Investigations, uh, the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, Gaiman Fire Department, uh, several Kansas agencies that assisted, uh, local agencies here in Texas County that assisted, and I'm sure I've forgotten a few, uh, but I would like to just say thank you, uh, even to the public. Uh, if there was a lot of questions from the public, as, as was there any danger to the public? And I, I think from the from the get go, once we arrived on scene, that and and we gained a little bit of information that we, we felt this wasn't a random deal, all right. We, uh, we felt that with some of the information coming in that it was, it was more targeted and we started, started to look in those, those areas that we were pointed to. Okay, thank you. Not much information yet for us, but okay, we're waiting to hear if there's anything they can share. I'm uh, George Harrison Leaps III. I'm the district attorney for District 1. I wanted to, uh, to start to let you know that on Friday, the informations were filed, and they were filed under seal. The reason they were filed under seal was to protect our law enforcement officers and to try to keep the children out of harm's way. We were successful. No shots were fired, and the children were kept out of harm's way. Our district judge issued an order this morning, and those files are now unsealed. So you can get the information at the courthouse, you can get the affidavits at the courthouse, which will give you uh, give you the facts that we were working off of. Additionally, I would like to, uh, I'd like to begin by, this has been, this has been an amazing enterprise. I was reading on social media, some of the stuff, and, and there were people out there that thought law enforcement was asleep, that they weren't doing anything. Uh, there were even additional law enforcement agencies, the Kansas Bureau of Investigation, Dallin County Sheriff's Office, Shimron County Sheriff's, Sherman County Sheriff's Office from the state of Texas. Everybody came together and everybody helped. We're probably talking somewhere in the neighborhood of a hundred law enforcement officers. Truly, no exaggeration, working night and day for 15 days. I want to thank the public we had people calling us from North Texas Panhandle, from the Oklahoma Panhandle, from Southwest Kansas, providing us information, responding because they cared. And the information we received from them was critical. Also want to thank corporate America. I don't know how many search warrants we issued. Now I'm telling you, they responded in lightning speed. Anything we needed, any order we sent, we got everything that we needed. Lastly, I'd like to thank all the law enforcement agencies that came together and worked together as a team and all their personnel. They did a fantastic job. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are like a big nothing. What Any is additional this? Additional questions you guys have, go right on ahead. Is Question there time. Confirmation at this point that the bodies recovered are not at this time. We have um, we identified that there were two bodies during our search. Um, both of those um, deceased persons have been transported to the Oklahoma Medical Examiner's Office, where they will do a proper identification and also um, look into a cause and manner of death. What led to the discovery of the bodies? Based on the evidence that our agents and local law enforcement were able to obtain. Um, we uh, used that to search a wide area throughout Texas County, and we were able to use those resources in order to find where these two bodies were. Do you know the timeline for when the bodies should be identified and when we should know what the cause of death was? It's a case-by-case -case basis, um, but as soon as we hear back from the Oklahoma Medical Examiner's Office, we will let the public know. Can you, you guys describe have... the scene where these bodies were recovered and what state these remains are in? No, I mean, I can say that it was a very rural area. I cannot state the condition of the bodies. Is this private property? 
I cannot confirm that at this time. In Oklahoma, there's the death penalty if convicted. Could we possibly maybe see this in this case? You would have to reach out to the district attorney's office. That'll be something that will be discussed further down the line. D.A. Stewart uh, alluded to a lot of people calling in with a lot of tips. Were there particular tips that broke this case? We received several tips throughout this entire process. Um, the public, I mean, I know that we had thanked what um, that our local law enforcement agencies, what they were able to help us and throughout this search, but the people here throughout this area have done a tremendous job of reaching out to us. The original press release that we had put out on March 31st um, in regards to searching for these uh, two women, we constantly received several tips and had used those throughout the entire 14-day process um, in order to, to find these two um, bodies and then also um, discover and find those who were responsible um, for this crime. So the reason foul play was suspected was because of evidence found in the car. Can you go into more detail now of what that evidence was? We cannot still at this time. It is still an ongoing investigation, and that is for our investigative purposes. Again, we can say that the evidence that was discovered inside of that abandoned vehicle and around it, um, we're able to help our investigators determine that there was foul play involved and then led to the progression of this investigation. What was in the vehicle around it, we cannot discuss. It was quite a convoy in executing these four search warrants. Was there concern of resistance to arrest? How concerned was, how much concern was there over a possible gunfight? When you are regarding um, arrests and multiple arrests in the magnitude that we have all discussed, um, there is always, um, you know, there is always a cause of you know, of trying to protect the public as best you possibly can. Um, you know, we can say that all four of those arrests were made uh, without uh, incident. And so that, of course, went extremely well. And, and we are extremely great, grateful. Another agency that wasn't able to make it that was a big part of that and helped us tremendously was the Oklahoma Highway Patrol. Uh, so we want to thank them uh, tremendously on that. But I mean, again, um, there was concern, but we are extremely thankful that no one was hurt, no one was injured during this process. Did any of the four suspects charged in the case tell law enforcement where to find them? Say that one more time. Did any of the four suspects charged in the case tell law enforcement where to find them? Uh, no, we, we cannot discuss that at this time. How early did you guys have suspects? We can't discuss that at this time. Are you able to go into further detail how you believe that this was targeted and not a random act? Based on the evidence and the information that we were able to obtain throughout the entire investigation, what was found inside of, of the vehicle, witnesses, family, friends of the victims that we were able to talk to throughout this entire process, we were able to gain the information to determine that, um, that these four people were responsible for both of these women going missing. Also, are you able to confirm if this was over a custody battle? We cannot confirm that at this time. What's the relationship that Benny Again, because it is still an ongoing investigation, we cannot discuss that. We know that uh, one arrest was in Texas County, the three others in Simmer. Can you describe uh, the arrest process? You said there was no resistance, but... That's all we can really say at this time. And we can say that the four people that we were looking for were found, arrested, and placed into custody within the same day, and there was no resistance. And obviously you can't talk about evidence in this case, but is is there significant physical evidence in this investigation? Yes. Can you elaborate? No. Are you able to go into the condition of the body found? No. Is there a reason you guys were so tight-lipped right off the start? You said there wasn't a threat to the public when you guys were investigating, but still not a lot of information was released. Is there a reason for that? There was not immediate threat to the public. Again, as the sheriff alluded, this was a targeted uh, case and when you ask about us not releasing a lot of information in that two-week process this is the way that our investigators work this is what you have to do in order to get the job done everybody involved in order to catch those responsible and f do everything in our power to find both of these people who who went missing from the very beginning so again as we tried to do as the investigation progresses we can release um, as much um, 
as much details as we possibly can. But again, the way that this process works is you, you, you can't give away um, as much as maybe you guys are asking for because that's how we're able to catch these four suspects. Did law enforcement speak with Tiffany Adams on March 30th? I cannot confirm that. Does the property where the bodies were found connected to the suspects at all? I cannot confirm that. Was Kelly a court appointed supervisor for Butler's visit with the children? We can't go into that. So I know the bodies haven't been identified, um, but you know, everyone expressed their condolences. Do you think there's any chance that Veronica and Jillian are still alive? No. Any word on arraignment? Um, the we will look into that further. Um, when, when that is made available, we will, we will let everybody know. As the investigation progresses, do you expect the possibility for more suspects to be arrested? Not at this time. Um, have the suspects been cooperative and talkative, or have they provided any type of confession? Uh, we cannot release that at this time. Have the families helped you guys during this process at all? Have you guys yes. With them? What's that been like? Families, friends, people that have known both of these uh, women who went missing have been a tremendous help. Everybody that we have talked to has um, helped us tremendously in doing everything they can to give us um, the necessary information in order for us to try to track them down and find out what happened. Where are the children? We can't go into that right now. Are they, are they they're, they're, they're safe, are they, yes, yes. Are children are safe. Are, we can't go into that. Now that the FBI is involved, will they face any federal charges? Uh, we're not going to go into that right now. So what next? Is there going to be further investigation? Yes, in, the uh, investigation the continues. The next steps are when the identification of the two victims is made, we will let everyone know. And when the cause and manner of death is made by the medical examiner's office, we will let everyone know. Were right? The were the bodies together? We cannot confirm that. Right now, there are no suspects at large. The public is, is, is not in, in danger. That's what's important to us. We are extremely grateful that we were able to locate and arrest the four people that we believe are responsible for this crime. As soon as the, the identification is made with the bodies, we will let everyone know. Um, but again, it took everybody in this case to get this done. We know that there were people throughout the two-week process who were, who, who were frustrated, who wanted um, answers as soon as possible. You know, we wanted th those answers too, but, but just know that our OSBI agents, FBI agents, troopers, Kansas uh, Bureau of Investigation, the KHP, everybody worked nonstop in order to come together and make these arrests. Can you talk at all about the relationship? Between no, we can't go into that right now. Was there ever any concern for the children at any point in this investigation, like for their safety? There's always concern whenever there's children involved, but we can say that the children are safe. With this being such a rural area, did this make this case unique in any way? It made it challenging. Again, you're talking about northern Texas County, near that Kansas line. Um, it, it's very rural. Those of you in the media that have been up there covering this, there's not a lot of homes, not a lot of buildings or businesses. Sometimes you could use cameras to help you in this case. We did not have that. So that's what made it extremely challenging. Is there any video evidence? Not at this time. Have you ever seen a case like this? Like, is there anything different about it? The OSBI covers all kinds of cases. Uh, each case is different in their own way. They're all just as important to us. Um, but, you know, this case was tragic. You have two people um who are who are dead um and four people that committed in in an absolutely brutal crime and so again that's why it took every agency involved in this in order to get this done those four are still being held here yes is everybody good thank you everybody for coming thank you <laughs> what did we learn, everyone? Time for your crib notes. I think the flag is trying to tell us something. Okay, so that's the end of that press conference. Let's put that sound off because we're done listening to that flag.
flagpole, am I right? Oh my goodness. So let me just quickly go over just a little bit of what we may have learned. Okay. That last sentence at least was some confirmation because they're still waiting to formally identify the remains that they recovered. They did say two bodies is what's being reported instead of, for example, scattered human remains. Two bodies recovered. But what Hunter McKee said is there's two people dead and four people committed an absolutely brutal crime. So, yeah, we can read between the lines that they found their bodies, right? <laughs> so they just have to be careful, you know, as I said in the beginning of the stream, I also have to be careful to just say, okay, they identified their bodies and found it because they haven't yet. It's at the medical examiner's office. They're going to formally identify them. Not sure how long that will take. Normally that doesn't take too long. But the cause and manner of death, that could take a little longer depending on what they found. Uh, Brooks Kelly says, wish they would ask what sex the bodies were. To narrow down the, I guess, what's obvious, but they can't state right now, right, legally. So, I mean, they really couldn't tell us much. I know many people say, well, why then have a press conference? I think it's just to show face a little bit, to show the public. I don't know, we are here. But I do think, <laughs> I do agree with a lot of you that a Facebook post would have been just fine or media release, like a one pager that they've done before. I think in this situation it could be fine until the bodies were identified. But okay, everybody got a pat on the back. <laughs> good job, everyone, good job. So 15, they worked night and day for 15 days. I think they did a good job finding two bodies in a very rural area, and they said in Texas County, Oklahoma. So I'm not sure exactly where. Of course, we know that. One was arrested in Texas County and three in Cimarron County, if I remember correctly from my presentation yesterday. So they said, um, based on the evidence, they were searching a wide area throughout Texas County. They described the scene as a very rural area. I like how the sheriff said that they, when they found the vehicle, which I think was the Texas Highway Patrol, they found the vehicle, they thought there were signs of foul play, and they immediately established a crime scene. They, again, they did the right thing. One would think they should do that, but in some cases, you just don't see that they do that immediately, right? So they secured the crime scene, and then the OSBI became the lead on the case. They worked night and day for 15 days. Uh, of course, today we heard from the FBI, from the district attorney, even though I wish the questions for the district attorney would be, are you going to, do you think the death penalty will be pursued for all four suspects, one of them, two of them, what, maybe that could have been interesting. Anyway, they couldn't say too much, but they did say there is significant evidence. I'm surprised they didn't say when the arraignment will be. I mean, that should be pretty obvious. When are they going to get arraigned? Surely that should be quite soonish, right? Arraignment, they don't expect that there'll be any more suspects. They also can't release information if someone confessed or not, so that's rumored. Uh, from Jillian's mom, apparently from Jillian's mom. I always say apparently just in case it's not her, but on social media it's being shared that... Jillian Kelly's mother said Jillian has passed, and then she also said the granny, this Tiffany Adams, confessed. So, and then there's rumor that Tiffany Adams is in protective custody. So I would think if she confessed and now maybe she's on suicide watch or something, that would make sense to me, but it's all speculation, right? Charlotte said this is a professional press conference, not for random speculation, real life, not TV drama. Absolutely, Charlotte, absolutely. Of course, the wheels of justice turn very, very slowly. And they just want to keep the public informed and show face of who exactly was part of this investigation, you know, and all of that. So they're not suspecting that there'll be more people arrested. <laughs> that reminds me, last night I, I had a dream that they're going to arrest two more people. I was like, woke up, oh my, were they going to arrest two more people? Who are the other two? <laughs> my brain trying to figure it out. No, no, they've arrested four. And now today they said they don't suspect that there's going to be more arrested, right? Uh, the children are safe. They couldn't confirm if they are, you know with CPS or with family. Yesterday, someone in chat who I believe was a local, but again, it's you know, someone in chat, we've got to take it with a grain of salt. As much as I love all the information, it could be speculative. I'm not sure where the information is coming from, but say that the children are with Veronica's dad's side. So I hope that I hope they're okay, but they did confirm several times that they are safe. When asked are the, were the bodies found together, they said they couldn't confirm. And lastly, that last sentence there was, two people are dead and four people committed an absolutely brutal crime. So that also sounds like a lot more than sh shooting them. Like, as they said, maybe they shot them there by the car. Some people are saying that they, that eyewitnesses, actually, I saw that somewhere, and that I think it was on Facebook, that eyewitnesses had said 
that they didn't see the woman near the car where it was later found. So I don't know. I do not know. We'll have to wait for more information. Slackjaw said somebody should get something out of this. Here you go. Love your channel. Oh, thank you, Slackjaw. Um, I will keep you posted. Of course, we will, as you know, if you're new to this channel, I always wait. <laughs> I want to wait for official information. So, of course, you know, I'm going to go on a mission, okay? And I might ask for some help <laughs> from MB Inc. and Grizzly Cat to let's all... Even if you guys, if you want to dig, if you find any of these documents that might, you know, be unsealed now or might become unsealed in the next few days, please download them and send them to me. Um, I will do my little security check for, you know, Kaspersky <laughs> internet safety because you can't just click on any links and documents. But send me what you got. I'd love to see the documents um, as well if they do unseal anything. Someone in chat actually said, uh, hold on one second. Frank, uh, Frank Labella said they have to protect the case right now. There will be another press conference soon enough. I agree with that. And uh, someone, Frank also said from an LEO in Florida. Welcome to you, Frank Labella. They just unsealed prelims. Not much info will be given out today um, to protect the children. And of course, about the pending charges on the fourth. Yes, uh, Carol Brown, thank you so much. So, yeah, don't get too hyped up about what might be shared in the documents. We know that these things sometimes work slowly. Sometimes we get that PCA really quickly. If we have interesting documents, you know you're in the right place because we do love documents over here. We're total nerds. <laughs> we love documents, map times, bullet points, presentations, and all those sorts of things. So if you like that, you're new here, make sure you subscribe so that you can join us covering this case and many other cases. Uh, thank you, Carol. Really appreciate it. Rochelle said, first presses are usually non-committal and usually have no real information. Exactly. So, you know, that, I think they did that, right? They just they just told us what they could, which wasn't all that much today. Eden Fox said, I'm in Texas, Panhandle, and Cimarron County is like two and a half hours from me. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for being here. Thank you to all the locals who are here and also emailing me information. Uh, yeah, so Frank said they have to protect the case right now. There will be another press conference soon enough. And Jennifer said, just reviewed the case on the Oklahoma case search. Somebody go get the probable cause affidavit. Yeah, yeah, go get it. Let me check my inbox quickly. Wait, <laughs> I'm looking. What is that? Somebody sent me a link to something. Let me just see. Ooh, okay. Do we have PDF somewhere here? I don't see a PDF yet. I will go and dig. I will... Look, if anything needs to be redacted, of course, I like to do that as well. So if you send me documents, I want to just make sure that I don't share anything out there that I shouldn't be sharing, like all the kids' names and things like that, addresses. Oh, no, no, no. Sometimes we've got we to gotta protect, right? Extra layer of protection that the court might not have done by mistake, in error. Okay, so thank you so much for watching that press conference me with me. I really appreciate it. I can only read between the lines. Of course, we're waiting for formal identification. But it does sound like they found the two women's bodies. And therefore, they did say at the press conference, condolences to the families of these two women. So that's also saying something without saying something. So in that regard, absolutely condolences to Veronica Butler and Gillian Kelly's families. This is absolutely devastating. I mean, on a, on a Saturday. I was going to say a random Saturday, but a Saturday. Planned visit with the kids, okay? And Gillian goes along as a court-approved supervisor you know, doing her job, doing her thing, going with Veronica and the two of them gone. That was their last day, March 30th of 2024. That is just so sad. So I'll keep you posted. Make sure you check out the community tab, YouTube shorts, videos, and live streams, all the different sections. I you know, make lots of different types of content. So I hope you check it out and I will see you again very soon. Thank you mods. I really appreciate it. I know today was very busy as well and I'll See you all soon. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you have any information to share or something that you want me to add to my presentation or the case, send it to me, grizzlytruecrime at gmail.com. If you want any uh, links, uh, my email, uh, my website is grizzlytruecrime.com. Okay? Okay, bye everyone.